Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 14, Deburring. If you like this content, consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link down there in the description and also links to all of the tools that you will see me use in these videos. Okay, let's dive in. So what is deburring? Well, the word sure sounds like there are something called burrs and we want to de them. And uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So every type of machining or cutting operation that we do on metal leaves a burr, which is just like uh, sort of like a snag at the end of the pass, uh, you know, a little, a little bit at the end where the material couldn't quite shear completely away and it kind of gets pushed off the end as the cutting tool leaves the surface. And this manifests uh, most obviously as uh, a rough or sharp edge on the part. You might look at this corner here and think, oh, that's perfect, machining done, nothing more to do there. Well, uh, the macro lens reveals all sins in machining, so let's jump to that. And there's your huckleberry right there. So you see as the cutting tool went past the end here, that last little bit of material just kind of gets folded over and doesn't quite shear off the way it's supposed to. And here's that same corner after deburring with a file, and you can see now there's just like a microscopic chamfer on that edge. and. That's really what we want because now we know for sure that the burr is gone. But deburring is not just about getting rid of those burrs, it's actually about making the part pleasant and safe to handle because even if you didn't have a burr, after the machining is done, you've got effectively a perfect 90 degree corner in a spot like this. And uh, so what that actually is is a knife edge and uh, it's not very comfortable to hold and uh, to manipulate and uh, you could even cut yourself on it, especially on these corners. These corners are actually very sharp indeed. So deburring uh, also helps uh, get rid of that and make the part uh, comfortable to hold. Unless you think it's just the mill that does this, here's the part we just finished turning on the lathe. And there's our old friend the burr again. Like I say, the macro lens reveals all machining sins. So here's that same part at normal viewing distance and uh, while it looks perfect, you don't see any imperfections, there's a little something something going on there at the end, you can feel it. So these are going to be your primary weapons against burrs, and uh, if you want to buy any of this stuff, I'll have links to it down in the show notes. So starting on the left here, this is a chamfering tool. Uh, this is for use by hand, but you can also get chucking versions for machines. And they have different numbers of flutes and various other configurations, but uh, the basic idea is uh, it's a, a tapered cutter so that you can put it in a hole and just give that guy a twist, and that's going to deburr the top edge of that hole. So this is most commonly used after drilling, uh, drilling metal especially. You'll get that big burr on the bottom, and uh, this guy will take that right off. Now that chamfering tool is not to be confused with this guy, which is a tapered reamer. And uh, this is more typically used for enlarging a hole slightly. And while it may sometimes also help with deburring, uh, it, it's just as likely to create new burrs uh, because it is a cutting tool and uh, not a chamfering tool. But they look the same, so don't get confused by that guy. Next we have these guys. Uh, they don't really have a name other than deburring tool, uh, but the end on them spins and they have a little ball on the end and just in front of that they have this cutting edge. Let me give you a closer look at that. So what this guy allows you to do is the little ball will run on the surface of your material and this edge here, when you hold it at an angle, will slice the burr off of a corner. And the great thing about these guys is they work on all different shapes of, of edges. So you can use them on large holes, you can use them on slots, you can use them on straight pieces. Uh, there's a little bit of technique to using them. Uh, the first few times you try it, you might mangle your edge, but uh, with a little bit of practice, these guys are, are extremely useful and uh, pretty much an essential tool in your deburring toolbox because there are lots of types of cuts and shapes of openings that this is the only way to do it. Look bad on YouTube. But what about me? Uh, well, yeah, don't forget about good old emery paper. You can use this guy for deburring too. So, when in doubt, don't forget about this guy. Now, I started with the cool kids of deburring, but most of your actual heavy deburring lifting is going to be done by the humble file. And uh, this is a, a standard single cut mill file here, and uh, it's a fine file, and uh, you can use this. Uh, on straight edges from parts off the mill, and uh, a very common use of this is to deburr on the lathe. So let's take a look at that right now. So after turning and or facing a part on the lathe, you're going to be left with probably a burr, but at very least a very sharp knife edge angle here. And uh, so we want to take that off. And 
while the part is still in the lathe, it's extremely convenient to use a file to do it. And just like any other lathe operation, because the part is spinning while we do this, it's very easy to end up with a very consistent and uh, polished result. So this is called lathe filing, and uh, safety is extra important here for a number of reasons. First of all, we're working close to the chuck, so if ever there was a time when the meat blender was going to grab your hot dogs, it'll be now. So be very mindful of these spinning jaws, and it's very, very important that you have a handle on your file. Uh, this is always a good idea, frankly, uh, but on the lathe, it's simply not negotiable for safety reasons. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't have handles on their files because files don't come with handles and maybe no one's ever told you you're supposed to buy handles to put them on. The reason is quite simple. Remember, this chuck is spinning this way, so if anything grabs, you know, if the jaw snags the end of the file or something, it's going to push this file towards you. And notice where my hand is. There's a very good chance that this sharp metal tang of this file is going to get driven right into my arm, and that's no joke. So uh, don't mess around with uh, safety uh, when you're lathe filing. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Have a, uh, have a good handle on there. Be mindful of how you're holding that file, and uh, you'll be fine. And you also want to be mindful of where your arms are while you're doing this. So keep your hands and your arms forward of the front plane of the chuck, out here. Out here is safe. Don't, don't get in here and wrap your arms around the chuck. You're, you know, you're going to be tempted to do that, but keep your body completely out here and you will be much safer. So the actual technique of this is pretty simple. Uh, you want to try and hold the file at about a 45 degree angle, not too flat, not too vertical, uh, because again, you're trying to create that very fine chamfer. And uh, you just need a light touch and you're going to be moving the file gently forward and lifting it on the backstroke. Remember, files only cut in one direction. So if you rub it backwards on the work, all you're doing is dulling your file. So uh, you want to use light strokes forward, a little bit of pressure, lift it up and come back. And try to work in the middle area of your file. Uh, you don't want to be working out here on the end because that increases the chances that a chuck jaw is going to grab that end and drive the file towards you, which you don't want. Now for spindle RPM, you don't need that much for filing, so lower the speed than you would use for turning or facing. Uh, so something in the like 200 RPM range is, is all you need. Uh, you might as well just keep it low drama. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here with my file at a 45 degree angle, kind of working in the middle here, and just kind of lightly pushing that file forward. And you can actually see the chamfer form, and you can feel it as well, so you kind of know when you're done. And you can keep doing this as much as you want, really. The, the more chamfer you put on it, the more kind of attractive the part gets, and the nicer it'll feel to the touch. So I think you can even see there on camera how we've got a little bit of a, a chamfer there now on that guy. And if we bring in the machining police, aka the macro lens, you can see that uh, we do indeed have a lovely chamfer on that corner. So who died and made you machining police? Uh, physics, you hopeless YouTube hack. I hate this guy. Now there's one other very important reason for deburring, and that's precision. Those burrs that we looked at under the macro lens uh, might look like nothing, but they can be two or three thousands easily in, in size. And if you don't deburr when you take measurements, you're actually reading the height of those burrs, potentially. So uh, imagine if there's burrs on the edges of this part. When I go to measure the size of it, those burrs are going to be under the jaws of my calipers, so my measurements are going to be inflated by a tiny amount. And this kind of false positive error is the worst type in machining because what it means is that the part is smaller than you think it is, and that means you're going to remove more material than you think you should to hit your dimension, and you're going to end up undersized. And of course, machining is subtractive manufacturing, so if you get undersized, well, yeah, you're probably making that part again. So uh, deburring, very important for precision and getting correct measurements. So the takeaway then is that you want to deburr before taking measurements. Now that's easy to say when I have the part out here on the bench, but often the part is in the machine uh, in, a, in a complex setup and you have to take a measurement to know how far you have left to go, but you don't want to take the part out and have to redo your setup. So there's a few tricks to get around that. Uh, the first one is on your calipers, you may have noticed that there's these little low spots, these little cutouts at the base of the jaws, and those can be used for getting around your burrs. If you position the part so that the burrs are in those low spots on the jaws, then you've canceled them out of your measurement and you don't have to worry about them. And then similarly on the micrometer, just make sure that you're measuring in past the edge of the surfaces where the burrs would be. So position your anvils 
so that they're not sitting on those burrs. And on the lay that's straightforward, just make sure that you're measuring in here and not out here on the edge where you might be actually registering that burr. You also want to be especially mindful of burrs when using an edge finder on the mill because if you've got a, a burr on this corner, let's say you've just done a milling pass on this, uh, if you go in here and try to find that edge, what you're actually going to find, of course, is the edge of the burr and not your part. So that's going to mess up your, uh, where you think you are, whether, whether you're using hand wheels or a DRO for, for setting your zero after you've found the edge, you're going to be off by the thickness of that burr, and uh, that, can, that can add up. And one last note on precision is that burrs will interfere with clamping on the part properly. So if you are, for example, trying to square up stock in the mill here, you need this, these surfaces to seat squarely against the vice jaws and your parallels. And if you've got a little burr back in here, that's actually preventing that part from seating properly. And uh, while the burr will squish when you clamp down on it with the vise, the resulting squish isn't going to be square or flush or flat or anything that you need. So uh, yeah, whenever you have the part uh, out and you get the opportunity, you always want to deburr it. And if you can, uh, while it's sitting in the vise before you take your measurements, get in here and deburr with some small files before you stick your micrometer or your calipers in there. Rawr, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. So deburring is an important technique for working precisely, and precision in machining is as much about habit and ritual as anything else. So uh, add deburring to your ritual and you will get more precise. So this has been deburring in a nutshell. I hope you found it useful. Please do subscribe on Patreon and here on YouTube, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.